and we'll be on our way. All right, everybody see that? Yes. Take it away, Harriet. Oh, okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, let's go to the next slide. Uh, welcome to uh, Dividend Reinvesting 101. Uh, my name is Harriet Chan, and I am a director at the San Francisco Bay Area Chapter of Better Investing. Um, I've been a member of BI since 1999, became a director in 2000. Uh, I've been investing and option trading, uh, 40 years in investing and about 11 years in option trading. Um, my email is skcots at yahoo.com. Please feel free to contact me if you want to talk. Uh, we can make uh, arrangements. Um, I am a graduate from Mills College and I am a plea major and that acronym stands for political, legal and economic analysis. And I have an emphasis in economics. Okay, uh, next slide. I developed this course uh, because of feedback and um, People will say to me, I don't have time, I don't have money. So I was trying to figure out what can I share with you um, that doesn't take that much time and doesn't take that much money. Um, and so basically I kind of des designed this course for millennials, somebody who is in, the, uh, in their 20s or early 30s. And the reason why is that dividend investing is a passive way of investing. And unlike growth investing, growth investing, you see it, a company growing really fast and the stock prices um, appreciating very quickly. Dividend investing usually means that they're large companies and you don't see the results until the end. Uh, so it takes years for uh, you see the results. So I'm kind of curious, uh, if you use uh, your Zoom, how, how many of you, how many of the audience uh, are millennials? Can you show your hands? And maybe the staff will tell me how many hands are raised. So far, I don't see any, though someone in the chat said not a millennial. <laughs> not a millennial. No, oh, okay. One hand up. Uh, One hand up. Oh, okay. Um, we got I some Gen that. X. Hi, Gen X. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess we have a mixed audience, which is great. Um, I remember, you know, when I when I was told that I needed to learn to invest, I was already working a full time job, two part time job, and going taking a course in college, and I was thinking, oh, I have to learn how to invest, and I really was opposed to it until I had to ask myself was the status quo something I could accept? And my answer was no. So that meant I had to, I had to change. So I had to do something a little differently. So that's how I got into investing. Okay, rule number one, for all the newbies, uh, uh, you need, rule number one is you pay yourself first. If you're gonna say that you're gonna save or you invest at the end of the month, if you have any money left over, most of the time you won't have anything. So rule number one is that you need to take care of yourself first. So you pay yourself first. 
when you thrive, your family, your environment will be a happier one. And it's not enough just to survive. You deserve a life of happiness in a thriving in environment. With this pandemic, it's really important that you have to realize that you have to have multiple streams of income. And dividend reinvesting can be very helpful, but it is important to start as soon as you can and establish a process that would be helpful to you in a thriving life. Now, brokerage firm now even let you buy a fractional shares. So um, when I first started, it, you know, it cost $155 for a transaction. So that's no longer true. So dividend reinvesting is a way of building a supplemental income stream uh, and it will become a big stream in the long run. Next screen. Um, the disclaimer. Now, everything that I'm going to talk to you about is for education purposes. Um, if you, you need to do your own research, and that's the only way that you can reduce your stress level. The more knowledge you have, uh, the more improvement you have in your financial literacy, the less stress that you're going to have over, over financial uh, matters. Next screen, uh, the agenda, what we're gonna cover today. Um, I'm gonna explain who we are in Better Investing. Uh, we're gonna go through dividend reinvesting, the elements of it, and then we're gonna have a summary and question. Now, the goals of this class is to show you the results of regular investing and reinvesting for a company like Johnson & Johnson. Um, and the reason why I wanna do it is to encourage all of you to start taking control of your financial future. Next screen, um, who we are. Um, we are a better, oh, back one. Oh, oh, there we go. Um, better Investing is a nonprofit organization uh, we are voluntary based. So everybody in the San Francisco Bay Area chapter, we're all volunteers. And we're, we basically have a goal of trying to share information uh, with uh, people and trying to get more people to learn how to be a better investor. Uh, we are member driven uh, and we don't make any commissions and we don't make any stock recommendation. So, um, the website is uh, www.betterinvesting.org. Okay. Uh, so that's it for next screen. Johnson & Johnson. Okay, blue chip. Now for the newbies here, uh, blue chips. Why is it called blue chip? I believe it comes from playing poker. I think the most expensive chip is the blue chip. And so that's how they got the reference. Uh, blue chip companies are large companies uh, with brand names and that you would recognize like Johnson & Johnson. So uh, we will be looking at Johnson & Johnson stock data from 1980 to 2021. So that's 41 years, okay? The next slide I'm gonna go to is Johnson & Johnson website, okay? So there's a lot of information. So any company, uh, that you're interested in, you should also go to their website and take a look at the information. So this is from uh, 2019. So, but the information there is very interesting. Um, let's see if I can blow that up a little bit. Uh, they are basically, you know, in medical devices and it's non-invasive invasive medical devices. They have a pharmaceutical arm and they have a consumer uh, health care. Um, so they're kind of diversified within their own company. Next screen. So this is some financial data um, that was very interesting too. So you can see here that it says over on the left-hand side, um, they have 36 years of 
adjusted operation earning growth, okay? And next to it in the blue arrow, they have 58 consecutive years of increasing their dividends, okay? And uh, as of 2019, that was 11.8% return to shareholders. So this just some basic data and the numbers are good. Um, okay, so next slide is some of the brand names of Johnson & Johnson. So Listerine, Band-Aid, uh, Johnson & Johnson Baby Shampoo. Uh, next screen, Tylenol, uh, Motrin. And so you can see their, their names that you would recognize, Benadryl, okay. Uh, next screen. Uh, and this is, now this, screen is for the uh, pharmaceutical or not um, the other parts of it. Um, they are very big on uh, oncology now. So they're making big, big progress uh, in that field. So they're, they're quite diversified, which is nice. I also want like to say that in regards to Johnson & Johnson, there are only two AAA rated companies in the United States. Johnson & Johnson is one of them. And, before, and I will ask, answer the other question, who's the other one? And the other one is Microsoft. So those are the only two companies that are still AAA rated. 20 years ago, there were a dozen or two. And so it's really have um, come down to just two companies uh, for AAA rated bond ratings. Okay. So uh, from this point on, what I'm gonna be doing is show you on screens from my Excel spreadsheet about what would happen if you invest $50 a month, um, every month. And then when you get a dividend, you would reinvest that dividend. Okay, next screen. So what you will see on here uh, over on the left side is the dividend is in lavender. So like on line nine, that 57 dividend, 50 cents dividend. Okay. Uh, the purple, the deep purple, the reason why it's darker is that Johnson & Johnson will increase their dividends every year in May. So I want to highlight that. And then uh, in yellow, like on line 21, you will see that in May, they had a three for one stock split. And then over to the right-hand side uh, in the background, uh, if it's a beige background, uh, it's a recession or downturn. And if it's a light green background, it's a bull market happening. So, You'll kind of probably need to refer to this uh, slide to kind of uh, take a look at it. The other thing that I want to uh, point out was that, so if you see on the screen, it's on column D uh, starting in uh, March of 1980. And then in, you have to purchase one share of stock. So I did that. And then in April 1st, 1980, uh, you could see in column D, the monthly purchase of $50, okay? What the stock price was, how many shares did you purchase or a fractional share. So you could see that $50 on line three, that we were $50 and the stock price at $71, we purchased 0 0.704 shares. So the total share would equal to the one share that we first purchased, and then we added that 0.7 share. So we have a total of 1.7 shares, okay? So on line five, you can see in May, it increased their dividends to 57 cents. So out of the, 
uh, 2.3 shares that now you own because you purchased a fractional share again on line four in May. Uh, and then on May 19th on line five, the, the, the dividend was uh, issued. And so you got 2.36 shares and you got 57 cents per share. So the dividend you got was total $1.35. And you're going to reinvest that, put it back in, plow it back in. And you can see that on that line five, the total shares in column G is two shares, 2.38 shares. Okay, so you're buying a fractional share. You went from 2.36 to 2.38. It may not seem significant, but whole, uh, but you, what you see at the end would be very impressive, I think. So, um, and then uh, on the line 15, where it has a coral or beige background, that's January, uh, I have a typo there, that's January 2nd, 1981, okay? And so at the end of the year, um, at $50 a month, the market value on column H is $719.62. Okay. All right. Next screen. So do you remember what I said about the beige? Okay. Um, in 1981, 82, and partly of 83, um, we were in a recession. Okay, but uh, okay, so what on line 38? Okay, the dividend went from 22 cents that you see on line 34, and then on line 38, this is May they raised the dividend to 25 cents. And the reason why I put this dividend increase line uh, and gave, it, gave you the percentage, because the feedback I got was that people says they weren't impressed with the 22 cents to the 25 cents. And um, they said, well, it's three cents and it's a little bit of an increase and that's good. I says, but if you do the math from 22 cents to 25 cents, that is a 13.64% raise. And I says, to me, that makes me smile from ear to ear because I don't think people are getting 13% raises uh, on a yearly basis. So I think the dividend here, even though the amount was $11.32, if looking on line 38, the dollar amount may not be impressive, but the percentage is, because if you got $50, you put in $50 and it is returning and they're increasing the dividend, at 13.64%, you got your money working pretty hard. Uh, so that's a really good thing. Uh, certainly it pays better than uh, CDs. Okay, next screen. So we're gonna go kind of quickly through uh, the dividend increases. And uh, I, you guys will be getting a PDF file of all these screens. So take the time. Uh, when you get it to review it and look at the column G and the column H, you know, to see how the dividend is growing. Okay. Um, and I think you should be impressed. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So we're on this screen and on line 54, okay, right at the top, okay, uh, the dividend increase, right? Uh, 12%. And then on line 70, uh, the dividend increase was 7.14%. So you can see in the background, it's white now. So that we came out of the recession. 
And then on January 2nd on line 64, you can see now that uh, the total of the market value is at $2,842. Okay, so the next screen, we're into 1985 now. So it's been about five years. And the next increase is on line 86 is 6.67%. And again, on line 102, uh, the increase is a 9.38%. So here again, like if you look at line 102 and you look at line 98, the dividend went from 32 cents to 35 cents. So that's a three cents difference. And so it's really important when you start investing that you do the numbers, you do the numbers. And what I mean by doing the numbers is that you do the dollars and you do the percentage because as the feedback was saying, 32 cents to 35 cents, it's only three cents. But if you figure it out, the percentage, that's a 9.38% increase in your dividends. Um, that is significant, okay? Next screen. Uh, so on line 118, uh, we have a 20% increase in the dividend, okay? Uh, next screen, okay. On line 134, the dividend increase, it's a 7.14% dividend increase. And then on dividend increase on line 151, okay? It's a 28.89%, that's a hefty one. But look at line 150, they had a two for one stock split. So if you look at column, the stock price column E, okay? Uh, on line 149, the stock price was at $95.50. So when you have a two for one stock split, you could see over on column G, we went from 142 shares. Now you have 284 shares, okay? Um, and if you look right after the dividend, in, the stock is now at $51.50 because uh, it had a stock split, okay? So again, if you go back up to line 144 over in column H over on the right-hand side, you can see that the market value is at $11,824.94. Um, this is after you've been investing for about nine years now, okay? And so, but again, um, dividend reinvesting, you, the results are not that impressive um, the first 25 years, um, but it, the reward comes at the end. Okay, next screen, uh, 20. Okay, so on line 167, uh, we have an increase of the dividends from 29 cents to 34 cents. So again, quote unquote, just a five cents uh, increase in the dividend, but the percentage is 17.24% if you calculate that. And then on line 183, the dividend went from 34 cents to 40 cents. So that is a 17.65% uh, dividend. So if you go from um, when I said nine years, right at the top of the screen, it was nine years that you've been investing. But now in the year 1991, look at the value of the market uh, value of the stock It is now at $22,000. Okay, so the money is and you know, with these dividend increases in in double digit, your money is working hard for you. And you have to think about if you had just savings uh, in a savings account or a, a CD or buying treasury bills, um, these numbers uh, are much more impressive. Next screen. 
So on line 199, uh, we have again, uh, an increase of the dividend from 40 cents to 46 cents. And in June, in line 201, we again have another stock split in 1992. And if you look over at column G uh, in the highlight, uh, so you've been investing for 12 years now, and now you have 658 shares. To me, th those numbers are, are starting to grow very, for, starting to be much more impressive. Okay, next screen, 22. So on line 216, on row 206, the dividend increase that went from 23 cents to 26 cents, three cents difference, but it is a 13.4% increase. And then on line 232, it went from 26 cents to 29 cents and is at 11.54% increase. So if you look at column, I mean, in row 226, this is 1994, beginning of the year, now the total is now $31,000. Okay, so let's keep that in mind here. Let's go to the next screen. Okay, on line 248, um, a dividend increase again is in, in May. It went from 29 cents to 33 cents. So that's a 13.79% increase. Now, I haven't talked too much about it, but uh, if you look across that line at 33 cents, and based on how many shares that you have now, that's a $244.35 dividend check, okay? And that is every quarter, uh, and each quarter, uh, will increase because you're putting in an extra $50 every month. So if you look right below that at line 252, you can see that dividend check is 246.29, okay? Because you're plowing that back in and buying more shares. And if you look across there, now you have about 750 shares uh, of stock. So in, if you look at this, uh, on line 258 for the beginning of 1996. So you've been investing for 16 years now. And so if you're 25 and you add 16, uh, uh, you're 41, uh, with just investing $50 a month, you would be sitting on a little supplemental uh, portfolio here that's worth $64,000. And I remember when I was 40 <laughs> and I go, that, that was uh, very comforting, you know, to have a little bit on the side that you saved up and it builds up. Okay, next screen. Um, on line 264, okay, we have again in dark purple is May, you have another increase uh, to 38 cents. And so that is a 15 point 15% increase. And right after that, you see the bright yellow line on June 12, it has a two for one stock split. So that meant that you now have 1,529 shares. Um, so that's impressive. Who would ever thought you would have thousands of shares of, of Johnson & Johnson. Okay, and then on line 281, on row 281, we have again in May the following year, uh, increase from 19 cents to 22 cents, and that is a 15.79% uh, increase. And it, it's nice to know that on, on a quarterly basis, your, your dividend checks are now totally into the three over $300, okay. 25, next screen, on line 297, okay. Uh, and there's another increase 
and that's a 13.64. Let me go back, let's go back to line 291. Okay, so January 2nd, 1998. So $50 a month, you're only investing $600 a year, but look at the market value of your portfolio. It is at 102. You got into the six figure. Now, it did take you 18 years to get here. But one of the examples that I was telling people when I first was teaching these class at Mills was that if your mother knew to buy and invest in Johnson & Johnson at $50 a month, in 18 years, you would had $102,000 for your college education fund, okay? So, um, because one of the things I asked at Mills was how many of you guys had student loans and everybody rose, uh, raised your hand. So if we knew something about dividend reinvesting, surely we would have done so, okay? Uh, okay, uh, so let's go to, uh, at the bottom of the screen, uh, in the coral color background, January 2nd, 1999. And if you read across it on the right-hand side, that portfolio is now worth $133,410. Okay, next following year. Okay, dividend increase on line 329. Again, from 28 cents to 32 cents, that's four cents. But that dividend increase is the 14.29% increase. And look across that at 32 cents, your dividend check is $525. And so you have 1,648 shares, okay? I wanna talk a little bit about um, 211 on, on row 325, um, 211, 2000. Um, the super, mar uh, the super, they call this the super bull market. It lasted 9.3 years, okay? And then you could see on 327, on line 327, I have a beige background again. So we're in a recession in the year 2000. So the next screen we get. So we're in a recession, but guess what? On line 345, we have another increase because Johnson Johnson do this every year, okay? And they raised a dividend from 32 cents to 36 cents, which is just four pennies, but percentage wise, it's 12 and a half percent increase, okay? Um, I also wanna take this time to take a look at those uh, stock prices. If we're in a recession, you could see on line 342 on the stock price, which is column E, the price uh, is at 87.47. Uh, two lines up, it was $97 a share, okay? Uh, so, if you guys are impressed, one of the things, now I, st I stay with the $50 a month because just for the consistency, but if you were in an investor here and you see your money earning double digit, so whenever the stock prices dip, you should send in some extra money and you know extra $5 or whatever, or say, when I get a pay raise, I'm gonna allocate you know, uh, extra 5% or 10%, whatever you want. And it will make these number look so much even better, okay? So on line 347, we have a stock split in the bright yellow stripe on June, okay? And so the amount of shares you have now, it went from 1,600 shares to 3,300, over 3,300 shares. And if you look down at 2002 on line 357 and over on the right-hand side. So you've been investing now for uh, a little over 20 years and the value of the, of the stock is now at $194,000. Okay. Um, 
I'm going to answer and answer the questions about what is a stock split in just three more slides. Okay. <laughs> um, so you can see here a dividend increase on line 363. Um, the increase from 18 cents to 20 and a half cents. That is a 13.89% uh, increase. Okay. So next slide. Uh, we again on line 379, the percentage of increase in the dividend is 17.7%. So I went from 20 and a half cents to 24 cents a share. Okay. And now look at that dividend check. The dividend reinvesting is $829. And know that that comes quarterly, you know? So that began to be impressive. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> um, dividend increase on line 395. Okay. That uh, from the Let's see, that went from 24 cents to 28 and a half cents, and that is a 23.33% increase. And look at that dividend check on column C. It has hit over $1,000. Uh, okay, then we go down to a dividend increase on line 411, and uh, that is a 15.79 increase. So now you've been investing, if we go back to line 4405 on January 3rd, 2005, you've been investing for 25 years. You have, your portfolio is worth $225,000. Not bad, okay? Next screen, okay. Uh, the dividend increase on line 427 uh, represents 33 cents to 37 and a half cents. That is a 13.64% increase. And line 443 at the bottom of that screen, that is a 10.67% increase. Okay, I'm on, um, on screen 30 and there was a question about what is a stock split? Yes. Okay. So a stock split, or uh, why they do it? Usually the stock market uh, prices uh, in the market used to be that um, survey showed that people like to buy stocks when it's under $100. So when the prices starts to climb up, what they do is they do a stock split. And basically how I can explain this is that um, it's like exchanging a $10 bill for two fives. So in reality, they say it's, it's a event that doesn't affect anything. Uh, because if you got a $10 bill and you got two fives, um, it's still worth $10. But what people don't realize is that when they do stock split, it, it also, management is also telling you that they believe that the stock price will go back up. Eventually it will go back up. So it's a positive signal. Um, and, uh, and you could see it now in the stock market. It's much harder to buy Google at 2,700 a, a share than it is to buy uh, Apple, which is at $172 a share today. Or you could buy a stock like um, Micron, uh, which is you know about seventy dollars a share. So it makes people feel like, oh, this is easier to buy because it's at a lower price. Um, so Johnson and Johnson uh, does that from time to time when the stock prices goes up, uh, up. They will probably you know they usually will do a stock split. And you can go to their uh, website and they will give you that information of when they have in the past split their stock. Uh, so the, does that answer your question? 
I think that works, Harry. Do you want some more questions? There's a bunch in the chat. Okay. Okay, so someone asks, how does a company earn a AAA rating? Um, it has to do with their finances. Um, you know, it's just kind of like uh, your credit score, okay? Uh, how much debt do you have? Um, and they're, all, they're also looking at your ratios um, and things like that. I, in the 2008 uh, financial crisis, uh, I think there was four companies that lost their AAA rating. Um, now how, you know, I don't know the details. I just know that they got knocked off. And right now um, there's only two, you know. So um, yeah, but basically it, it, it's your financial health of the company. And so Microsoft is one of them and uh, Johnson & Johnson is one of them. I took a look at Johnson & Johnson's recent uh, uh, balance sheet and they're sitting on 25 billion in cash. So I said, oh, that's a good thing. They definitely can keep up with their dividend paying, <laughs> okay? Yeah, and a couple of people are asking, how do you research companies that are stable and pay good dividends? Do you have any websites you can suggest? Yes, I have that at the end. Okay. Okay. I have that in the end. Uh, okay. Gotcha. Um, how about a couple more? You want a couple more? You want to keep yes. going? Let's keep going. Okay. So, and uh, towards the beginning, someone was asking, is this sort of investing beneficial for someone nearing retirement or post retirement, or should they pursue other strategies? Uh, well, it depends. It really depends on the person. You know, I'm a, I am an active investor and I, I invest. Uh, for growth companies. My husband is not an investor. So I'm also making a transition to quote unquote, buy more dividend stocks because he will, be, he will need the dividend income when I'm gone and, and it will simplify things for him. Um, so it depends on your needs. Um, I, I think it's not either or because as far as an investor, you're supposed to diversify. So you should have some growth stock. You should have some, you know, dividend stocks, you know. But I think that whatever you have, you should be able to sleep at night. I think that's more important. Um, and I know you're going to address how to find good stocks to pay good dividends at the end. But here's a couple more questions. Um, are there other companies today similar to J&J &J and Microsoft but without, but without the high price per share? Uh, well, it depends on what you decide. Uh, if you're saying below $100 per share, um, currently a lot of the average price for the stocks on the stock market is very close to $100. You know, there are, there are stocks that are lower, um, but uh, there's not as many as before. And there was another question that came up that asked about the yield, you know, whether I should be looking at the yield versus uh, the, the dividend increases. Again, this has to do with the individual investor. So like I said that when I first designed this class, um, I kind of was thinking about the millennials because if you plow back, your dividend. It's like you don't need, you have a job, you don't need to live on the dividend. So you can plow back the money uh, into it, reinvest the dividends, and then make it grow. Uh, but if you are elder and you say you need income, then the yield is more important, right? Because you, you need the income. Then you would be looking at different things because the yield on Johnson & Johnson it's about two and a half percent, but there are companies, you know, like IBM or AT and T. Uh, I think AT and T is paying seven percent. IBM is paying five percent. Verizon is paying five percent. Um, so if you need income, then you would be looking for yield. But if you, uh, so it depends on who you are. It's not right or wrong it just depends on your situation you know what's more important do you need the income then you would look for a yield if you can uh if you don't need the money 
and you want a quality company and you can plow back and reinvest, then you know you can take that lower yield and then the yield will uh, it may be stay low because the yield is based on the stock price and how much it pays out. But if you look at what your cost is, you'll find if you do the math, uh, if you own it long term, your yield is quite high. Um, but you got to do the math to figure that out. Okay. Um, one, one more, uh, Harriet, and then we'll let you keep going because a lot of people are asking about how to find good stocks that pay good dividends. But uh, someone's asking if they can get a copy of your calculation worksheet so they can see how the calculation or formulas work. Uh, yeah, okay, no problem. Um, okay, let's move on to 31. Uh, okay, 31. Okay, so we're gonna go back to looking at the dividends on line 459 and the dividend increases uh, went from 41 and a half cents to 46 cents, and that's a 10.84% increase. Okay, so, and at the bottom of the screen, the, the um, I wanted you to take a note that uh, has a beige background, and we are having, a, we're now entering a recession, and on line four, line 467, uh, over on the right-hand side, uh, this is 2008. This is when the market makes a correction. This is also the time of that Madoff scandal. Okay, uh, so there, there, there are bad, bad things happening and there's a uh, crash. Okay, you could see that the stock, uh, at the top of the screen, it was at $63 and it comes all the way down to $58. But I wanted to, uh, next screen, but I wanted to uh, take tell you that when we are in a recession, Johnson & Johnson or companies like Procter & Gamble, they, they, there is this phenomenon called flight to quality. So everybody used to be buying this stock or that stock for the growth or whatever. And Johnson & Johnson does not have much appeal until the market goes down. When the market goes down, everybody wants the blue chip companies. So they're going to be buying the Johnson & Johnson and running the Procter & Gamble, okay? Uh, and you'll see like, just like today, the market was down 300 points on the NASDAQ. And Johnson and Johnson dropped four dollars and sixty-two cents today. So anytime the market goes down, people will go tend to go to the blue chip companies and buy up Johnson and Johnson. It's a safe haven. Okay. So if you study the the market and you look at the history of it, you'll 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 understand the phenomenal. And so it's kind of comforting. Um, you know, when, when we are in a recession, you know, people uh, will still have to uh, shampoo their hair. Um, they still will buy title and all, you know, um, Procter and Gamble, you know, you still have to do your laundry, you still have to brush your teeth. So those are staples that um, people will go to and it gives them comfort that it's not going to go away. And that's why it's so important to you know that Johnson & Johnson has been raising their dividends uh, for 60, over 60 years. Same thing with Procter & Gamble. The, I think they're, it was like 63 years for Procter & Gamble. Um, and if ever a company mentioned or rumors to cut the dividends, I go, you need to pay attention to that. Um, because uh, when a company talks about cutting their dividend, the stock will drop off the cliff. And it's not me saying, you just study the history, okay? But you don't have that with the Johnson & Johnson, the Procter & Gamble, okay? So um, their finances, finances are, are in good shape. Okay, next screen, 33. Uh, here on line 507, 
2011, the increase uh, dividend is at 5.56. Um, so now you've been investing for 30 years, you know, right? And so if you look at lines 517 for January 3rd, 2012, um, you almost have a $300,000 portfolio. Next screen. Again, the increases 7% on line 523 and on line 539, um, it's 8.2%. And look at the dividend, column C. Your dividends are now 3,000 every quarter. Okay. Uh, and next screen. Uh, uh, this one. Okay. So next screen. On uh, 2014, we have an increase of 6%. Uh, dividend increase on line 571 of 7.14%. Some people might say, well, you, you know, you got double percent increases earlier and now it's single digit. Uh, that's very true. But if you look at the dividend uh, on column C, how much that dividend check is, I, I wouldn't complain too much, okay? because every quarter I'm getting a $3,000 check. So you think about a $3,000 check every quarter, that's $12,000, over $12,000. That's an extra $1,000 a month. That should improve the standard of living significantly, okay? And this is based on $50 a month, okay? Granted that it's been a long time, um, many, many years, but it really does show you that uh, that $50 is working hard for you. Okay, next one. Uh, on line 587, uh, a 6.25% increase. Okay. And if you look at uh, line 581, you now have a half a million dollars. Okay. Just a couple more slides. Uh, Next one, uh, line 603, we have a 5% increase. Okay. Oh, okay. And if you look at line 615, uh, over on the right-hand side, uh, January 2nd, 2018, you have a portfolio that's worth $746,000. Next screen, uh, on line, 635, you have a 5.26% increase in your dividend. And on line 651 at the bottom, uh, it's a 6.32% increase. And your dividend now is at 50, over $5,700. So this is the end of it in 41 years, okay? Um, it's very interesting. So $20, $50 a month times that by 41 years, okay, you basically put in $24,700, okay? But the amount of dividend that you invested, the amount of dividend you collected is $228,000, okay? So I figured it out that what you had was not only the dividend you plow back in, the stock also appreciated. So the stock appreciation is at $702,000. Now this took 41 years. The cost per share, uh, if you calculate the dividends that you got, you added to your $50, you would get, and you average out the cost, your average cost would be $43.12. If you base it on just the $50 that you invested, um, and then with all the stock split, your cost basis is $4.21. So to me, and as of today, if you do the calculation, um, the value, the market value here, when I ended it in uh, April 1st, 2021, which was uh, last year, um, it was 955,000. Today, with the market closing, uh, you will have a portfolio that it's over a million dollars. Okay, so I'm gonna, next one. 
the question was, you know, where can we find the resources? Um, there's an ETF called NOBL. It's a in, it is an ETF that contains all the aristocrat dividend members. Now, what is the aristocrat dividend member? Um, an aristocrat dividend member is any company that have increased their dividend for a minimum of 25 years. So hopefully that will help um, you find a lot of companies that you want to do some research because they have proven that they have raised their uh, dividends for 25 years in a row. Now, earlier I had mentioned IBM and IBM in the last three years has raised their dividend by one cent. So, but their yield is 5%. So, and the reason why they raised their, their dividend by one cent was they wanted to get into this uh, group, the aristocrat dividend um, membership. And so they did that. So going forward, I don't think that you should expect IBM to raise their dividend very much. But again, if you're looking for yield, it is a company right now that is paying about a 5% yield. Okay. Now, the other resources is a, a mid-cap ETF is REGL. It is uh, the ProShare mid-cap 400 dividend uh, aristocrat ETF. So if you look into them, these are companies that have raised, there are medium-sized uh, businesses, but usually medium-sized company that are raising their dividend. So that's something that might be appealing to you too. So um, okay. And then um, what was the question? I saw a question flash through. Yeah. Harriet, there's quite a few questions and we have yeah. a few minutes left. So let's see if we can back up and get a few of these answers. Okay, is $50 a, a month still a realistic number? Yes. Okay. Good. Or less than that too, because the, the, the brokerage firm no longer, you can buy fractional shares now. So, you know, you could do $10, you can do $50, you can do $100, even though the stock is, uh, Johnson & Johnson is at 182 a share. Okay, uh, and then we have a question. Sometimes the stock price drops, even there are dividend income, the dividend may not make up. Uh, For the decrease. dividend may not make up the income. Any advice on this situation? Um, the dividend will not what be enough. Yeah, if the stock price drops. Oh, okay. The dip, the dividend. What is a dividend? A dividend is part of the profit that the company is making that it is distributing to the shareholders. Okay. Um, so you have the calculation. You know what the dividend is. And if you've taken the value line class or you go to value line at the library and look it up. The, it will make a projection of how much they're going to increase their dividend. So that can help you do some planning. Okay. Um, as far as the stock market fluctuating, it always goes up and it goes down. But over in the long run, if a company continues to make a profit, the stock price will go up. Okay. And then what are what does ETF and NOBL and REGL stand for? Um, ETF means uh, an exchange uh, fund, okay? Um, so instead of saying it's a mutual fund, it's an ETF, it's an exchange traded fund, okay? Um, the NOBL is the name of the ETF, like a symbol, uh, like IBM or Apple, AAPL. So if you type in NOBL, it will give you some information. Or you can go look it up uh, on the internet, or um, you can go to the library and do some research. Okay. Okay. And 
I, I think we need to wrap it up because it's a little bit after four o'clock and we've right. still got a lot of people hanging on to your every <laughs> word and that's great, but we do have to end. So I wanna remind everyone that we are gonna send out this recording so you can watch it again and we will send out the slides and then um, Harriet, if you can send me the calculations people wanted, I'll include that in the email as well. But okay. um, we have to say good afternoon to everybody so that everyone can get back to what they're doing. Um, I wanna thank you, Harriet, for another interesting presentation. Um, so thank you for contributing and donating your time to the library. And I wanna thank everyone for joining us today. And look for that email later this afternoon. So okay. Thanks everyone. All right. Well, I just wish everybody gets the courage to start investing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Great advice. And thank you, okay. my co-host JP. Thank you, everyone. And uh, we will see you next time. All right. Thank you for attending. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.